In this video, we're going to analyze this video. Um, this video is about the the sponsorship. So as a result of those deaths of those kids in South Africa, uh, the all the puzzle shops, the tech shops need to be registered. So we have ATM, Africa Transformation Movement Leader. Um, so this party, I would say the policies around centre-right, it's a centre-right policy, it's a centre-right party, not left. So for you South Africans, um, when you've been asking me about what is a centre-right party, so ATM would be a centre-right party. ATM, uh, PA is centre-right, uh, what's another one? Um, Action SA is also centre-right. So EFF, ANC... MK, they're all lefty. I mean, EFF is far left. MK, we don't know what MK is going to look like, but it looks like it's far left, another lefty sort of things. And then TA, it, it says to people that they are uh, sort of centre-right, but I don't think they're centre-right. They are far-right. Um, and also VF plus is also far right. There's a lot of parties in South Africa, but these ones, three ones that I've mentioned, uh, ATM, PA by Gainton McKenzie, and Action SA, the leader is uh, the Mr. Mashaba. He's also leader for that one. So they mostly centre right, and I think we must think about going to the centre right. Centre right, they're very much good at managing stuff like economy, national security, and all the stuff that are happening right now. It's just too, due to this failure of governance by ANC. So now, right now, they're going to provide some. Uh, this leader Vuyo is going to provide some, you know, some of his view about these. Um, has a shop saga in South Africa. So this, all of these things has come out as a result of the death of children in South Africa. As always, like I said, ANC is always in, in an emergency. You know, they don't govern. They don't govern. They always act in like they're celebrity. So when you go to parliament, what do you look at? What are the things you see that are happening as a government that you should be looking at? You know, should I think about whether the law that you're not enforcing a lot of this stuff with puzzle shop is the this puzzle shop is the failure of the governance, the failure of leadership, and also enforcing the current laws that are there. Like I said in the last video, when uh, President Ramaphosa was saying that they are going to have decided to do X, Y, Z, all of the stuff that he said were the things that are already there. They should have enforced it anyway. They're not new things. They're not things that they've just come up and thought about. Wow, what it, we're brilliant. For it took him for about six weeks to come back and regurgitate the same laws that we know about. So now let's listening to Vuyo, and Vuyo will tell us what we already know. President Vuyo Zungula has also sparked a debate by asserting that foreign-owned spaza shops in South Africa are actually operating illegally due to non-compliance with the country's business visa requirements. And according it's, to South Africa... Exactly. So they're not... Yeah, it's illegal. They're illegal. They're not compliant, but whose role is to make people who come to your country to be compliant? Is the government, is the enforce, is the law enforcement, is the whole machinery of the governance that makes sure that people who come to the country are actually legal? They also um, know about the law of the country. I live in Australia. I know a lot about Australian laws. So that was the first thing to know about. So you cannot say that not knowing about the law is an excuse for you to actually um, say, oh, I didn't know about it. So you're running a business. I mean, the, the worst part is that when these ANC mobs come over and say to South Africans, these people are skilled. I mean, I think they shouldn't be saying that this time. After all of this crap of this death, I mean, the skill part is gone. Who is skilled? I would say South Africans are more skilled because under South Africans, when they were running these puzzle shops, they didn't have any single death. There was no, never a single death. And I grew up in South Africa, you know, but we, grew, our family were the farmers, so we're mostly in the farm area in the Free State. But every now and again, I used to go to the township, now once or twice a month, 
you know, with my grandpa, but never heard of this nonsense of kids dying as a result of the food being sold in it. The reason why even it's kids because it's this it's the snacks. It's these lovely packets of snacks that kids love and the sweets. So the the snacks that are loved by little kids and even adults do but have it as well. But overwhelmingly it, it actually affects those kids because they love them. And so we had the president that came up a couple of weeks ago to address, I mean, seven, a few days ago now, to address this issue, like last Friday. <laughs> but all everything that he said in that, you know, video, it was the same thing. He was repeating the same thing, the same laws that we know about, that these people should be registered. And you can ask yourself, if they're not registered, how they're paying the tax? See, they're not paying the tax. So where's the money going? And we will explain you what he thinks the money is going. Let's listen. Significant immigration regulations, foreign nationals seeking to establish a business must invest a minimum of 5 million rand. Zungula contends that spaza shops, typically small-scale retail outlets, do not meet this uh, investment threshold, therefore rendering them non-compliant and subject to closure. African Transformation Movement President Vuya Zongula joins us now to further unpack this. Vuya, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate you making time for us today. Good afternoon. So immediately after the president's address on Friday, you brought up this argument, basically stating that according to our constitution, foreigners who own spaza shops just don't even qualify in the first place to be doing business with the state. Definitely. Um, firstly, this is not a new issue. You will recall that there was a lockdown in 2020. Minister Njaveni spoke on behalf of government to say that all businesses, especially spaza shop owners, when the economy reopens, they need to be compliant. They need to register with SARS. They need to uh, make sure that they are compliant with all of the laws. That did not happen. You'll also recall that even the late Minister of Finance, uh, Minister Tito so SARS is equivalent to ATO. So how can these people run an actually good business and pay tax if they're not even registered with the SARS, with their tax office? Yeah. At the time said, um, in the new economy, the economy opens, SPAZA shop owners must be registered and pay taxes. Now, the issue that we have as the ATM is that this is not a new thing. And even the SPAZA shop owners, this 21 period is a grace period because in any case, any business owner in South Africa, for them to actually practice, they need to be compliant with the law. It cannot be that now the government is existing, ex is enforcing existing, existing laws. They are going to complain in want more time, whereas there's no new laws that have been brought by the government. It's just a matter of enforcing existing laws that should have been um, complied with in the first place. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just so lo um, looking at another video where all of these foreign nationals were complaining about they need more time. For what? These things, seven, 21 days to produce your documents, your business registration, and your, to see that um, you know, you're registered to pay tax. You have all the paperwork. Your business, it's a legal business. You're not uh, involved with some kind of selling illicit goods. And so these stuff, this should, you should have it. You should have it. It shouldn't take 21 days. In fact, it should take about, you know, at least an hour to bring all this stuff together and hand it over if you're really running a good business. You know, 21 days, it's a long time. In my view, this would have been at least 72 hours, okay? 72 hours, you need to produce all the... Even the fact that he said to them they must register. So what does that mean? It does. It, it means that he actually, Ramaphosa, his um, government knows that these people are unregistered. So he's telling us as South African citizens that he had people selling all these illicit goods to our kids, to your, to your children, unregistered. 
running these business, deadly businesses unregistered in South Africa. How can somebody be running a business that's not registered? This is ANC anyway. This is ANC's doing. This is this is their crap. Okay, let's listen. And the last thing um, on this issue, it is the concern that we have is that this is brought about by the dying of children. Now, there is a concern that once this phase goes past, the government is going to forget there's not going to be enforcement, and then there's going to be another new cycle whereby they're going to want to intervene, whereas this is, this is an existing problem that just requires the government to enforce um, existing laws. What we are upset about the ATM is that they spoke in 2020, they did not do anything. Why did it take the dying of our children for the government and the president of the country to come with these new regulations? Even now, every time on social media, we hear about fake foods being produced. Just now, in Fulen in the Western Cape, there is fake foods that are produced whereby dog food is being given to humans to eat and they are sold via these buzzers. Now, yes, and I told you about that also. There is also a question mark about dog meat because the meat has been sent to the lab to be examined. That's highly probability that is dog food and dog meat because there were dog, dead dogs there, meat that you saw. So, I mean, this is horrendous, awful. Now, the government is just going to wither the storm now because it's an, up, um, an uproar. And then after, they are going to go back into non-enforcement um, non of the laws up until another death comes, uh, happens in the near future. That is what we need to correct. We want a government that actually enforces laws instead of a government that will speak and say, we want to enforce the law, but that does, they don't follow through on that. Yes, exactly. That's what they do, ANC. They want to do certain things. They don't follow through. They're very good at announcing programs that involve a lot of money. And when you see those programs, there is not uh, accountability of what is the outcome. And there's a lot of looting that would actually, yeah, when you do the audit, when you do the audit. So, no. This is actually, it must be stopped. But the thing is, ANC that was able to do this because ANC had no oppo opposition up until this year. ANC had no opposition. Uh, DA is the second biggest party with voting. It's around 20%. How can you have a, be an opposition be sitting around 20%? So ANC is 40, opposition is 20%. The rest of the 40% are in ATM and other parties. So you can see even from that perspective that the opposition is not strong enough because DA, they right now DA, you know, the big thing is this uh, illegal mining and this puzzle shop in South Africa, but the DA is not involved in this conversation. So if you're an opposition, you want to govern for South Africa, you want South Africa to consider as the next um, you know, you know, as a next government, you need to actually be involved in these things to providing solution. So what they do as an opposition is that <laughs> I've never seen such opposition. Actually, I live in Australia and I can see opposition are very strong and it's very competitive. Is that they they just go after exposing things. I mean, how can you, if you're exposing things and you don't actually prevent things from happening by actually pointing out certain things to the community and also where you govern, if you don't show South Africa how you, where you govern, that you govern really well, people are not going to consider, South Africans aren't going to consider DA as an alternative government for now because you can see in Cape Town as well that there is, yes, areas in the suburb looks great but just about 10 kilometer drive you see all the crap that's going on there and twani was another one that they had they've been governing that um twani municipality for about eight years and look at how mamilodi and sunnyside looks like they like the slump areas so they're not really good at governancing they like they act like the advocacy type group i would Put DA as an advocacy group, not a a 
a genuine opposition a genuine opposition because if you're a genuine opposition you really need to be part of the conversation of the what's happening within the community that you want to govern okay unless you a you know an advocacy group for a specific part of it which is in any case for the business but then you can just become I, you know, an organization, not an opposition party, because a party must be a party for the people of South Africa, not for a specific small entity. So if you a party that goes about small entity, you want to remain as that as such, you're just not gonna grow, you're gonna remain that. So it, DA has always been around 20, hovering around 20 mark percentage. For many years now and i don't see it going above that because of the things that are key issues that are actually affecting everyday south africans that is the borderless south africa um the migration issues the influx of these low skilled migrants into the labor and also the failure of those businesses that they like to they say they protecting them to actually enforces the labor law for undermining that labor law in hiring and also a lot of things that you can see even the support around labor inspection workplaces they don't support that and we know why they wouldn't support that because one of their members they're the one that drives this influx of illegal low-skilled migrant many of them export exploited in cape town because they not registered because they're illegal and they not being offered that minimum wage standard that's required to hire somebody so you can see why it is not part of this conversation why it's actually not going to grow because these are the key issues that affect everyday south africans security jobs and now the safety of the of the kids so very important but they know where to be seen anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, we're quite interesting that somehow the small business department has largely been absent during this, such a critical debate where they should actually be at the forefront providing direction and reinforcing, as you've just said, those existing policy as well as laws that we currently uh, are grappling with uh, uh, untraceable batches of consumables that are suspected to be poisoned, yet we have very strict laws that need to be adhered to. So then what needs to happen? Because we've seen parties like yourself, the ATM, raising these issues in Parliament, but what type of feedback are you actually receiving? In the um, budget debate um, last year, Minister Stella Ndabeni Abrahams, when confronted, when we cornered her on this issue, she committed that the Department of Small Business is going to employ um, business inspectors, business inspectors that will do work that is similar to the labor inspectors. You'll recall that labor inspectors, they have to go through each and every company just to check compliance with the law from a labor perspective. However, when it comes to the business, um, and especially small businesses, there are no inspectors that are going around checking compliance. So that is the crux of the matter. Ever since Minister Ndabeni actually confirmed, um, affirmed that they will do that as a department, they have not done anything. And, you know, there's this argument to say the people that, uh, the foreigners that are running these bazaar shops are asylum seekers, therefore they need to be given leniency. Let me tell you this. There is no asylum seeker that will leave his children, that will leave his wife, and just alone run to another country. And the only thing they have, they are just having maybe the clothes that they are wearing. When they get to South Africa, within one or two weeks, they suddenly have capital to, you know, to open shops. They suddenly have networks in terms of buying in bulk and all of those things. What we're dealing with here, it is a case of criminal syndicates that are trafficking humans from Ethiopia, from Somalia, and making them work for them in South Africa. You will recall that there was even a report at um, the, the Spaza shops in South Africa actually funding terrorist activities across the, across the continent. So this also deals 
um, with the issue of the state intelligence. Because where is the intelligence in our country? If people can come untraced, unvetted, they settle in our communities. No one knows who they come from, who are, who are, who are they, where they come from, um, which networks are they part of. And they get to be responsible for a very important part of our society, which is the distribution of food. Yes, he said it very well there. Don't have to add to this. Yes, and South Africa has been grey listed as well. You see, so how can you have a sponsorship? Someone run a business, a sponsor shop, and not be paying any tax? Because uh, that's what Rama for Posa admitted when he said these people should be ready to go and register. So that means what she was, what he was telling us was that these people weren't registered. So that means when paying tax. And so they went audited to see if they're actually uh, actually having supplies that are comply with the good GMP standards. They bring in all illicit goods in the country. They bring in all these chemicals that are, are not poisons that are not are being banned in South Africa. They don't even know how to manage this. They're decanting all these chemicals. And yet, have you see the result of this death coming from that? So all of this is government. So the government is responsible for the death of the kids of South Africa. They are responsible. They must bear the, 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 the burden of this death. They just cannot be pu pushing the blame. They are 100% responsible for it. It's the failure of governance, failure of policy implementation, failure to uphold the law, failure to just, yeah, even that, just saying have somebody coming over and being an asylum to actually be responsible for food. The person you have inverted, you don't know, and you allow that person to actually own a business. Even the immigration law says no, they shouldn't. But this government, the ANC government, they just ignore it. They, they've got all these laws, they just ignore them, ANC. I don't understand what these people think. Whether the brain works really well, I don't know. I just, I'm really, I'm very embarrassed by the, the incompetent of it all. That is just, yeah, so embarrassed when by it. To South Africa distribute this food like you are, they are doing now. They sell fake products that end up um, killing our children. And even if we can look at the children that are dying now, what about the other long-term effects of people consuming expired foods, fake foods? and all of those things. So what we need here, we need all of these departments to actually take um, a responsibility in terms of ensuring the state intelligence must ensure that we do not have people that are unvetted, that are playing a, a critical role in our country. All the right. small business must do their part to ensure that all businesses must work and uh, operate in line with the laws. A very quick one, Voyo. I mean, just to get back to your earlier point there when you said there was actually an uproar and that is why government actually acted. I mean, there were numerous calls before the president actually addressed the nation on this very issue. So let's talk about his announcement now where it has angered some South African spaza shop owners. I'm sure you saw the, the insert preceding our interview. They actually feel that uh, the government shouldn't even be negotiating with these uh, foreign spaza shop owners and they feel like government is not prioritizing them as locals yeah they should they should not even be considering they should in my view they should not be in this 33 percent unemployment there should not be any foreign national working and doing this puzzle shop they should not be because they're high risk i mean they can work in those but running them you can see now all of this catastrophe uh is yeah it's a disaster because even with these um they say oh the law the the constitution say everyone but no it does have a provision because a provision there that's why the provisions say people of certain um if you're a migrant, you want to, the certain migration laws, visa, business, uh, and then the requirement for each one of them, but certainly not asylum, certainly not a refugee be running those uh, because of the high risk of it. And actually people who are running them need to be skilled. As you can see, if you have skilled people, you wouldn't have these debts because they would understand that you do not have to have a gun of phosphate table force and decant it 
and be lying around in your shops where you're selling food. I mean, it's assumed that this was accident because I would, even at this stage, we don't know where the investigation is with the police, uh, whether they've, there's nothing because anyway, we won't know until these people go to court anyway. But about what is the circumstances around this? Yeah, it is a worrying situation. Definitely. You know, if you go to any other country, there are very strict laws in terms of enforcing enforcement of the laws. I was watching one minister from another neighboring country closing down foreign owned shops in that particular country. And she was basically saying, I'm just enforcing the law. Yeah. But come to South Africa, you find that there's going to be negotiations after negotiations instead of enforcing of the law. And the facts are there. That part of the economy is dominated by foreign nationals to an extent whereby the locals are even threatened and when they are trying to open businesses. You'll recall that in Ratanda, in our in Hidrebeck, there's so many people, spaza shop owners, South African spaza shop owners who've been killed and actually threatened for daring to open a spaza shop. So what are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with um, foreign nationals who want to coexist with South Africans? Or are we dealing with criminal syndicates who believe they've got some right to that part of the economy? And if anyone dares to open a business in that sector, they will try and kill him. Mm -hmm. And if it's a government, they will try and, you know, um, avoid um, and, um, and complying with the laws of our country. So right. we can't afford to be a banana republic. We want, as an ATM, to say to the government, enforce the laws, existing laws. That is all that is needed. All right. Well, thank you so much for your contribution this afternoon. Mr. Vuyo Zungule is the president of the African Transformation Movement, also reacting to the Spaza Shop saga. Yep, as you've heard, he said it himself. He's a member of parliament. So this is the situation with this puzzle shop, you know. So here we're looking at a tweet by Dr. Nasipi Moya, who is the municipality of Tuane. And she said, Tuane, one by one, Tuane, we will be announcing the registration process for Spaza Shop in the next few days. Here in Tuane, Spazas are strictly for locals. So she's putting her foot down in Tuane. She doesn't want any foreign national to be registering shops because she can do that. As a, a municipality, municipality can decide who should be um, working and registering these shops, who should be trading in their own community under the South African law. So it is so wrong to say that this is not provision. There is a provision uh, for municipality to do this. And because when you look at how, in fact, how these uh, Paza shops have been running and the number of deaths of children, about 42 children died about last month alone, then you can imagine why uh, a municipality would want to make sure that people are running these shops are skilled and they understand the law of South Africa. So they wouldn't want to have any asylum or refugees to be running this because it takes a lot of works and to be monitoring first, to have people who are going to check these shops. I mean, it's a lot of uh, money that the local government must hire now, hire people to go and check that these people are following South African laws. Um, so that's a lot of money to hire people to do this and he's spending heaps a lot of money for that. So to reduce that as a government, you want to make sure you you, re, you have to increase the standards, the standards of registration requirement. You move up the notch so that you do not, you have people who are, will be easy to read the English language and be able to understand the rules and can provide all the necessary people that's required. And also you can be able to trace and look at their history. So how would you then look at the criminal record of these refugees and, and you know, asylum? Uh, who just came to South Africa, it is really hard for the government. Many of them we know that as a result of this Doji Home Affairs, they don't even, 
uh, have correct paper and they shouldn't even have the refugee state or asylum in South Africa because of the countries they come from. So we know that there's a lot of corruption there as well. But if you're a, a local government, a mayor of a city, of a town, you don't want to take risk of your community. You're going to restrict who is going to run and trade in your community. You want to make sure that people who are trading are of good character and not going to be posed risk to the community. And it's good on her for doing that, but obviously already part of the DA and others, they, they're up in arms, and we should expect there will be some human rights coming up her way to try and do this but the law is on her side anyway so i'll just give showing you this tweet about the dr nasi pamoya who is the mayor for uh Twane municipality which is Twane is pretoria and she just said no ways in her city now she's gonna have to deal with that all right thank you guys for listening have a lovely day